Recording in progress. Of nine. Um, okay, so why don't we start with attendance, even though I think we have a couple of people trying to get in. Um, Steve Brown? Here. Brooke Jewell? Here. Elaine Breslow? Here. Carolyn Coffey? Here. And Megan Brinzi is trying to enter the meeting, so we anticipate that she will be joining us as well. Catherine O'Callaghan and Sarah Pease and Mary Lou Lawrence are not with us this evening. Um, okay, so, sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Where are we starting tonight? Um, minutes. Minutes, yes. Did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes that Brahman sent around? Mm -hmm. Good as usual. Yep. Any changes? Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from November? Moved. Second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Aye. Okay, motion carries. Okay, and then you are up first. Is that right, Megan? Yes. Um, let me just move over to my my screen. Great. Can you see my report? Yeah. Great. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, so the first on the list for tonight, well, first I want to say I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and a super happy, happy Hanukkah, and I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as well, because I don't think I'll see you um, all before those two holidays come up. Um, so the first thing on my docket is um, OCLN reinstated blocks for patrons that owe over $15. Um, on their account. So um, through the, the COVID crisis, we um, as, a, as a group of 27 libraries decided to lift blocks so that that wasn't a hindrance for people um, trying to use the library, uh, especially when we were closed. Um, and so that has been reinstated. And it's been, you know, we put out some late notices um, and things have been circulating for about six weeks, uh, alerting folks that, you know, uh, if they have problems with their accounts. Um, and just like with everything, you know, there's still some folks that were felt as though they were taken by surprise a little bit. Um, so uh, it's been a little bit of a tough week for our, our circulation staff, and I've been extremely impressed on how they've been managing some of these situations. Uh, their customer service is on point um, and uh, just have kind of made maybe an upsetting situation for somebody, uh, an extremely pleasant one. So I want to thank them for really taking this in stride, and it's just kind of an unprecedented situation, and um, they've done a great job managing it, and uh, I appreciate them. Um, the next thing I, I want to talk about is um, I met with Steve and Brooke to, to uh, flesh out the idea of an outdoor space. Uh, we talked last meeting about starting to maybe chat with um, some folks had some professional landscape contacts and um, we just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page before we start contacting these, these people. Um, and I'm going to let Steve chat a little about um, what, we, what we worked on. Sure. Um, so I've requested to be able to share the screen. Um, can you see that yet? Yes. Okay. So we basically said, you know, what would we like to see happen if there were no constraints? And then of course we put in the constraints and then we got into the practicalities of who would support this and then some early planning steps. And so Brooke and Megan jump in um, when you wanna add on here. So um, let me just,
So is this still large enough? Yes. Okay, so we just went over what, where, why, and what would the impact be? So we really would love to have more programming space and I won't read it to you as long as you can read it. Um, just to save some time, I'll let you look at it. Um, if you're interested, this is a wonderful piece of software for everybody to participate post meeting. Um, Carolyn, I don't know what the rules are about um, using a device like this between meetings in terms of uh, open meetings. Um, good question. I don't know either. Um, okay. I mean, and you know, it's it, it's all around deliberation. Um, and I think I I'm sure it's fine for a subcommittee. Um, you know, of four or less, so it's not a quorum. Uh, beyond that, I guess it could be considered, you know, um, deliberating because you're you're working on policy, you know, policy planning and that sort of thing. So, so, so that might get into a gray area. Who's who's the czar that we can speak to? Town clerk, probably. Okay. Who has the best relationship with the town clerk? It's a new one. Carol St. Pierre um, has retired. So oh, we have, wow. We have an interim town clerk now. So um, I don't think anybody really knows her. Okay. 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 So um, any additions to that, what we would like to do? Looks good. Okay. Looks accurate. Um, this was where we were thinking of doing it. And why? And then the impact, I thought it was interesting that Megan highlighted the importance of uh, raising the profile of the library among non-users and it has quite an impact to see 100 kids on the lawn and and see that they're not playing sports but they're rather learning about something or experiencing something um and of course with a greater profile makes it easier for us to build support for some of our long-range plans and i have all this on a uh converted it to a Word document for those people that don't like these mind maps. So I could send that around afterwards. Um, so those were the no constraint goals. And now we get in some of the constraints. Uh, make this a little bit larger. So obviously um, how we would raise the funds, a couple of issues and um, maybe Megan and others can comment about um, some of the limitations about state library funds. Um, we know that we need CPC funds, need town meeting approval, have ADA con constraints. Um, we actually don't know for sure, the three of us didn't know who would need to approve this. Um, the second floor of the library is still sort of in play as it has been for many years. Um, I didn't realize, but uh, there's some interest in having pickleball courts for the senior center in the back, back space. So um, any other comments, additions? Um, the, the other, um, another thing that we have to work around, you know, obviously we'd be using this primarily in nice weather and the HVAC system uh, but in that back courtyard is very loud. We, we tried to do outdoor programming in there last summer and it was, mm. it didn't work out because it was too loud. Okay. Thanks. So and then I, we went. Since we're talking about noise, I would say traffic noise too. Carolyn brings up that was on there. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, need to reduce road noise from Sawyer. Oh, okay. I just, I'm a little confused. So we're now talking about this outdoor space being not where we currently have in that sloping area, like where, where the proposed possible amphitheater would be. You're talking about moving this outdoor meeting programming space around the, completely in the back? I, I guess I'm, I missed that. We didn't get into those details, Elaine. We were just trying to kind of put a boundary around the problem. So as we go forward and plan, uh, so we were just highlighting issues that could be important if we wanted to do something in the backyard. I went and looked at the um, documents that describe the um, slopes and boundaries of the library. And it goes up, you know, it slopes down to where there's the, that brook. And um, so that is land that is available. Uh, as Megan mentioned, we wanted to have an idea when we approached a professional of what were the boundaries that the professional could work with them. Uh, so instead of saying, Elaine, you know, we're, you know, we want to move it on the Sawyer side, or we want to move it in the back. Um, we were focused on trying to define where we could do something, whether we chose under the planning steps to do it or not. Okay, and then the other thing, a question I just have is, what does having to coordinate with REC for the second floor of library have to do with outdoor programming space? Well, it's just one of the big needs is programming space. and. We haven't been able to use that space. And if, if we were able to have a long-term solution to get that, that would change perhaps um, some of the issues or modify some of the plans. So then going ahead, uh, just trying to highlight again, very broadly, who are some of the supporters that would we would really need the support from. Obviously, CPC and Russ Bonetti apparently has been very willing to help once we get you know concrete plans. Obviously, the Friends of the Library. And um, Megan, you commented that the schools want to be want to become more involved with the library. Um, I'm trying to remember where the Boy and Girl Scouts interest came from? Um, they frequently use our meeting room for ah, their okay. gatherings. Um, so this might be appealing to them for an additional space that they specifically could be um, utilize. Um, obviously, Chris, trustees, donors, elder center, senior center, it should be um, safe harbor, women voters. Um, Mary Lou Lawrence, of course, is very enthusiastic about this. And we talked about if we could provide more meeting, small meeting spaces, that might be a, uh, could be another group that would be of interest to support this. I think so, we talked a lot about people working from home and, um, you know, either not having the connectivity or the privacy that they might, you know, wish for, and that maybe an outdoor space at the library would, would help with that, of course, when the weather was. <coughs> so did I also see on the pro previous, um, when we looked at constraints, one of the constraints, I believe, was re with regard to funding. So state library funds can't be used to collaborate with others. So some of these things may resolve themselves based on, you know, who steps forward or who we approach, might approach for funding. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What, Megan, um, what, what is that, the state library fund, the state aid? Um, so if uh, that's for like the, the building grant, um, you know, I think at that time we were talking a little bit about you know, how we could marry, how we could join other departments in with, you know, uh, possibly they don't do outdoor spaces either, um, but by how we would, you know, collaborate more with the space um, in regards to rec. Um, and we brought up the, the building grant and unfortunately they don't support grants that are kind of um, dual department. 
Um, they only but state aid. State aid is fine, right? State aid is fine. Yes. Yeah. Ch uh, the chances of us getting a building grant are. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to be like negative right out of the box, but um, but they gave us a big building grant when it, twenty years ago when we did the renovation. So I I don't think we would be a priority. Um, no, and I don't think they. I'd have to look, but I don't think that they fund outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. Uh, then we just started to talk about what what would we have to do before getting involved with a professional. Um, so I'll just let you scan these. So the first real concrete, I guess, would be to build a subcommittee of folks interested in working on this. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that is, excuse me, that is a question, <clears throat> Steve, because we, we have already existing um, a building committee. So I suppose they could pick that up. A, they could. A gating, yeah, a gating question is, is this, you know, under the auspices of the building committee or is this a separate committee? Okay, let me just capture that. I mean, maybe we could just have that discussion. What, what, are, what are the thoughts on that, generally speaking? I'm wondering if Elaine and Carolyn have anything they want to contribute on that and as much as it's the three of us who make up the building committee. I, I think it could go either way. I think, you know, if the building committee wanted to take it on, that's great. Um, and if, but if this is something that is kind of a big enough project that would, you know, warrant its own committee, I think that's acceptable as well. I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. Um, the only thing I would um, caution against is having more than four people on it so that you don't have to post every meeting uh, and every communication that you have. Fewer than four. No, fewer than five, okay. four or less, yeah. So, is that all right? Yep. Yeah. So since we don't have everybody on tonight, you know, there may be other people that are very, very interested in, in taking this on. So, you know, I, I, again, I don't, I concur with Carolyn and don't feel strongly one way or another. Um, I'm happy to continue. I mean, I just, because it's outside versus inside, I just feel like this project is, is a, way bigger than any of us is really getting our teeth around. Um, and I, I did reach out to Amy Martin um, and uh, corresponded with her. Uh, she's happy to meet with us. She's in Florida for the winter, but she does have a designer still in town and she would send the designer over and face and uh, FaceTime uh, during the meeting. But I, I told her like that we weren't we, we were looking for um, procedural guidance, um, not necessarily design ideas yet. Like, do we do the survey before we engage a landscape architect? Do we not? Um, and what should we be thinking about in terms of costs with regard to the plans and potentially costs with regard to the project so that we can gauge the feasibility and we can, um, determine what the municipal process would be for engaging a landscape architect. Um, 10,000, if, if it hasn't changed, $10,000 is the magic number. And if it's um, less than $10,000, we can just ask three um, organizations to submit 
uh, proposals. And if it's more than $10,000, we have to go through a posting uh, process and ask, uh, you know, go through the dog and pony show. Um, so uh, she said she would be happy to help uh, and suggested that we meet after the first of the year. Uh, and I've asked her to get back to me with a couple of dates that would work for her and her designer. Um, and then we can figure out who the right people are to meet with her. And, um, you know, uh, as was mentioned uh, last month, I, I do like the idea. Yeah, the, the nice thing about this um, process that you guys started here is I do like the idea of saying, here's what we want to accomplish, not like here's an idea for how to accomplish it. But, you know, this is what, these are our goals. We want more programming space. We want better access to the parking lot, you know, and let them come up with the ideas because I'm sure they'll come up with things that we haven't dreamed of. So, well, and I, I would also like in that conversation to have the chance to say, you know, again, just sort of in a spitballing kind of way, you know, what, you know, what could we do for, you know, 10,000? What could we do for 50,000? What could we do for 100? And maybe figure out if this could also be a stepped project. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe, maybe that's not worthwhile, but I think that that could be, at least the conversation I think would be worthwhile because. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I, I just, I think that that's, that's an important first step, honestly. Because we're kind of, you know, out here in our imaginations to some degree. Well, um, when I hear back from her with dates, I will reach out, um, Catherine, to you and Megan to you to, you know, and, and throw it out there and then you guys can figure out how you want to proceed. Great. Thank you. For okay. that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. And, and I, I would just add that um, keep it simple. You know, when, when, when we have, you know, somebody volunteering to share their wisdom and ideas, I would just, I, I would stick to the goals and just say, ideally, this is what we would like to see. Instead of there's a lot of, um, no, I'm not saying it's not, this is very impressive. And I, and I'm, thank you so much for doing this, you guys. Um, but I would say this is overwhelming and not, and let's focus on what the landscape architect might do and what that expertise is. And then we have, you know, other places to then think about these other things and put them in place. Yeah. Now we could start just with what our no constraint goals are. And then as Catherine suggests, if we get a rough idea of what we could do for 10, 50 or a hundred. Right. I think that's, yeah, that's what I would suggest. Okay, well, anything else you'd add to these comments, Elaine? Not right now. I think they're, I think they're, that's exactly, you know, we want more meeting space. We need, it needs to be compliant. We need access from the parking lot. It needs to be, um, you know, I, I don't know how you, you would, if you limit noise, that means usually putting up trees. If you put up trees and people can't see from the street looking in at this wonderful space that's being occupied. So it's, you know, I guess maybe shrubs, but that's where a landscape architect can make suggestions. I'm just saying, we, there's a lot to balance. So I would just put forward the, the important goals and kind of see where that, you know, where does that realistically leave us? And, and I think that is a very good suggestion to, you know, most people can't just all at once take, do something, a project of this magnitude. So it may, you know, maybe in year one, this is what we do in year two, blah, 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 but have a plan in place um, and goals in place. Great, yeah. So that's basically what we, we covered. That's a lot, a lot of work, thank you. Yes, that's a lot of time put in, Steve. Thank you. Well, it was Megan and, and Brooke as well. I just and was Brooke using, and the, Megan. using <laughs> the software. Steve summed it up very well. <laughs> of course. Awesome. And the software is amazing. I'll have to think of other ways to use this. It is. Um, some people don't like this. and uh, But if you do, it's, it's an incredible way because when one person is talking, the other person, because this everybody can edit at the same time, can be capturing what the person that's talking is saying, 
And then at the end, you can go through and say, okay, this is the stuff that we captured. Is there anything we want to take off? Because on reflection, we don't like it, or you just send it out and ask for comments. So I think we can go back to the agenda. Um, if you could unshare your screen, Steve, if you can. Why not? <laughs> uh, here we go. I do it for you, but I don't know how. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, before you start, Megan, I just wanted to say I don't think that Megan Prince is able to get in. So. Um, no, no, I'm here, think. but I'm on my oh. iPhone, so it's hard for me. Oh, to you see. are. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Oh, let us go. Um, that was our big topic, so I think we could. Um, so uh, I met with uh, the town social worker. Her name is Stephanie Saunders, and she has a new intern, and her name is Samantha Joyce, and they um, have been working on a memory care support group, so we're hoping to have some of the sessions at the library. They've been at the senior center, and some of them will continue to be there, but we're hoping the library will broaden the audience for them a little bit. I think sometimes people hear senior center and uh, feel as though either they're not old enough in, in, in age or in spirit to be there. So um, hopefully um, they'll have a few more attendees um, at the library. They're also, we're also in conversation about having um, office hours from them at the library. We'll probably use one of the, the um, study rooms um, and just book it for a few hours so that they can uh, be at the library and just be available again, possibly to some more, some more folks in town. Um, quick program update. Um, the adult department had two very successful programs over the last week. We had an author talk with Ann Tucker Roberts, and she is the author of Across the Spectrum, Mothers with Autis um, Autistic Children Speak. Um, we had eight attendees, which wasn't a huge outpouring, but we felt like it was a really intimate group. Um, there were folks in town who could connect who hadn't um, possibly hadn't connected before. Um, mm -hmm. Ms. Roberts also had a specialist come and assist um, and kind of validate some of, you know, the, the things that the author went through, but also, you know, some of the things that the, that the um, attendees have gone through as well. Um, so it was a really um, impactful program. Um, and I hope we do something else like it again, very soon. I really like programs like that because it's really, um, extending the capabilities of the library in a way that maybe historically hasn't happened. And it's uh, very powerful to, when you say that people who have a similar interest in the topic didn't know, know of each other. And uh, so you're building coalitions that are gonna work on an issue that's important to the town. I hope so. And I think a lot of people see the library as a safe space, which um, I'm so thankful for. So I think, you know, some of these topics can be tough for folks to talk about. Um, and I, so I hope that we're providing a place that is comfortable for people to do that. Um, and the second program was um, the Boston Jazz Voices, a holiday concert, um, which was a partnership between multiple libraries, which has been kind of a, a, a fun thing that we've been doing through the pandemic as we're able to have virtual programs and, and partner with libraries that are, you know, nowhere near our location. Um, and we had 17 Cohassets, Cohasset residents um, listen in. That was on a Saturday, last Saturday. Um, I just wanted to put on everybody's radar that my director report and supervisor, the HR um, manager, uh, community services director, Miriam Johnson, has announced her retirement um, for late February. Um, I have enjoyed working with her very, very much. I appreciate her. She's always very direct, um, but she's also extremely compassionate. And uh, so I've learned a lot from her in a very short time. And I wish her a great retirement and she will be missed. Story walk. So a lot has happened with the story walk in a very short amount of time um, where we all left off. We had talked about some spaces around town that we thought would work. Um, and I proposed some of those spaces to our town manager, Chris Sr. Um, and he was very passionate about having the story walk be something that's mobile and be something that possibly could do some time at the town common. 
Um, and so I was on the agenda fairly quickly to talk to the select board and working with the facilities department on thinking of a very clever, innovative, and expensive way to have our story walk be mobile. Um, so we did come up with uh, Christmas tree stands, which I don't think we would have come up with if it was a different season. Um, and we created a prototype, which is at the library. And we brought the prototype to the select board last night. Um, talked a little bit about the story that we're interested in having over the winter, which is called Share Some Kindness, Bring Some Light by April Stout. Um, and um, so it was unanimously approved last night by the select board to have the story walk from late December until late January um, on the common. And I have reached out now to the Cohasset Common Historical District Commission um, in hopes that they will also support um, having this story walk at the common for for a month or so. Um, and I'd like to thank Carolyn for helping me connect with the members of that that commission. Um, Megan, could, could you expand a little bit more about uh, exactly what it is that the select board approved? Did they just approve the fact that this we have this this item and that it could be used in various town spaces or, or what exactly were the parameters of the vote? Sure. So they voted to have it at the town common um, for the month. Um, that was, can, so the, can you just tell, like, when, when we left the last meeting, yes. um, my, my recollection was we had, had brushed off the idea of doing it at the common and you were going to explore uh, with the trustees of reservations and stuff. Like, so um, uh, this I was surprised when this came about. Um, so can you just, how, how did it, how did this come about? Sure. Um, and it did happen quickly. So um, I brought, I had a meeting with the town manager about um, some of the spaces that we had talked about having um, the, the story walk. And so this was what was going on. The conversation that was going on at the same time was the lighting of the tree in the, um, in the center of the pond. And so the town, the town common was a hot topic. Also, it was right before the stroll um, and, and lining up the, the town common. And so that's when I brought this forward, it was, you know, well, let's add this to um, the excitement at the town common. Um, and so that's kind of how it began. And then, um, and then it, we started talking about making it a, a mobile piece um, because, you know, he was not... Not that he wasn't supportive enough of having it in one place, but he was having, we were having trouble together finding a space that we thought was appropriate for a long term placement. And so um, the idea of being able to um, move it to different places, I had another, you know, um, department head who was in the in the office while we were talking about it and they had an idea that they were doing an event at one of the schools they'd love to have the story walk there. Um, and the facilities department kind of, um, agreed to um, support the fact that this would be mobile and, and take responsibility for moving it to where it needs to be. Um, I don't envision it being anywhere for as short a time as a month um, besides the town common. Um, but uh, I think because the topic was livening up the town common, um, that's where this kind of came into play. Megan, that sounds great. Give us more exposure. Megan, Princey, were you trying to say something? I just, I'm curious to know how the prototype works. Oh, sure. Um, so, um, as you know, we received a grant for the display um, piece at the top. Um, and the what it is, it's a mailbox post that's attached to it. Um, and we... Um, purchased those from the Barking Dog, which is a company that specifically makes story walk displays. Um, and um, the bottom is a, it's a Christmas tree stand, but instead of um, just kind of using the screws to hold, like uh, support it, there's actually going to be bolts that go on either side. It's gonna be bolted into the, the, the stand. Um, and we also purchased some stakes and those will go on either side of the stand, just as an just an extra super duper um, 
cautious um, measure. With, with this um, contraption, can we now use it where we originally envisioned it would go? But um, yeah. <laughs> and 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 um, is that? I mean, I, I like the idea of having it on the library property because I feel like it's a good way of bringing people to the library, you know, and, and tying it to the library. Um, I think this is very clever. And I'm like, well, good. Why don't we just put it at the library now? Why put it on the common? Um, well, I think, you know, I like the idea that now we can do both. So it can go on the common and then it can go back to the library and be housed in the space that we wanted it to be. And then, you know, if the school, I'm not exactly sure what this uh, school event was specifically, but I'm just, you know, if there's another, um, you know, town event that this would be appropriate at, it could move for a couple months over to that area of town. Um, I think it does, you know, we keep talking about, you know, heightening the profile. And I think, as you said, Caroline, I think it can bring people to the library and it can also, um, um, increase the profile of the library by having it elsewhere as well. Elaine? Yeah, so um, I think this is rather inventive. Um, I'm not sure I love how it looks, but you know, we, we, we're, we kind of don't have a lot of options. But so my first impression and thought is if we can put, put these um, in place where we had intended, in other words, from playground to draw people, you know, from the parking lot down into the library. That was, that's kind of how this all came to fruition. And so I fully support that thought. In terms of moving it to other locations, what I envision rather this time of year, people are not walking around the common. It's just, you know, those things, it's just a, a hard time of year, in my opinion, only. Um, so I would almost think to place it on the library property. And then, you know, when the farmer's market, for example, happens in the spring and summer, you know, perhaps that would be a time when things are happening on the common anyway, to have something nice that represents the library and something fun for families to do. Um, if a school wants to borrow these for a particular event, I, now that they're, you know, mobile or relatively mobile, and if in fact facilities is, is going to be at the ready to move these things so that nobody on staff needs to be putting these things in their car, uh, <laughs> then, then I think that's one, you know, that's great. I mean, there may be other applications for this as time unfolds, but again, yeah. my first gut feeling is if we can now house them or use them here, especially because I just don't see people walking around outside the common right now. I mean, we're, we're getting it, people are busy. Winter is coming, although it doesn't feel like it in New England or Cohasset quite yet, but um, I just don't envision getting the exposure and it just kind of, I don't know, I don't want it to look like clutter when, um, when in another setting on the common may be more appropriate. It, those are just my thoughts. Megan, can you please stop sharing your screen? Yes. So we can see each other. Thank you. Um, I, I was, I thought, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. No, 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 go ahead, Steve. I'm just going to say there are two nursery schools that take breaks out on the common um, throughout the year. And if you have to be driving past when that's happened, uh, that's a pretty large audience of kids. Um, I think it's almost 150 if you take those two nursery schools together. So, um, there would be exposure even now were it to be there. I, I wonder if we could, if it, if we could, um, I mean, part of this is, is a little bit territorial of me because I sort of want to assert our ownership of it and also make sure that, you know, the library is sort of getting the origination credit for this novelty. And I, I, support the idea of it being shared. I wonder if we could have it be sort of a model in which 
the default is that it's on display at the library, but you know, we are lending it out to other town departments or to the schools or whatever organizations within the town, but sort of, um, you know, have some kind of default system and sort of promote it that way. And, you know, like in a lending situation, you know, we're a library after all. <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel about that, Megan? Or, oh, oh, oh Brooke, yeah. Go ahead. Um, oh, oh, go ahead, Brooke. Well, I was just wondering, <laughs> is there a way that we could kind of publicize on the story walk that it's part of the library and it's like, you know, donated or given to the community on loan? Um, and then my other question was, where, where on the commons were they thinking of doing it? Because there are those two preschools. I do see a lot of kids out there. It could be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Let me, um, uh, let me just pull up. So this will answer both those questions. So I created a um, cover. Let me just pull it up. So this was the, um, I'm just going to share this really quickly and then I'll unshare again. But um, so this was the slides that shown last night to um, um, display. Good job on the newsletter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was a little bigger this time, which was nice. It was like the pre COVID size. Um, Okay, excuse me, and this is gonna take a second to load, of course, too. Um, so this was kind of my draft of what the first um, display would be. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I give kudos to Ann Ferguson of Montpelier, Vermont, who really came up with the story walk, um, talked a little bit about what the story walk is so that when people come up to it, they, they, they know what they're experiencing and make sure that we put down our sponsors um, our financial sponsors. Um, so the story walk would need to start on the left-hand side of the walk because the way that you read um, read a story from or you read a book from left to right. So um, it's just more natural if you start on the left-hand side, which is across the street from the preschools. Um, and then so they would be 21 feet apart as you walk down the sidewalk and then cut into um, the middle um, sidewalk. Um, the way that I measured it. And, oh, and this is um, the story that we were interested in displaying, which is this share some kindness, bring some light. It's just um, a really nice book about a little girl and, and a bear kind of discovering the, the true meaning of kindness together. Um, and so it's about 44 pages or it's about 40 pages long. Um, so we would have a display at the very beginning, just kind of describing exactly, you know, that it's the libraries and, and, and I would keep this, you know, to Carolyn's, um, no, I'm sorry, to Catherine's feet um, of letting people borrow it. I would still keep that branding on there, um, even if people wanted to borrow it from us. I think they, they need to know that it's, you know, a library sponsored item. Might be something interesting to publicize too on the Cohasset 143 site. This is what we're doing. This is what's going on. Check it out here or here. Um, and a nice way to tie it into the schools too, like you said. Some communities have like a, a map of the different story walks. Um, and I know like when we had a book bike in Randolph, we used to map where the book bike had been um, and how fun would it be on the website to kind of have like, where's the story walk been and like what story was there and just kind of have like an interactive, you know, I wonder where the story walk is type of thing. Is the story um, like laminated pages and then those keep getting changed out or like, how does that, how does that work? Yeah, just like that. It has, it's so it's not, it's a little bit nicer than laminated pages. It has a nice like plexiglass piece that goes over the top that's weatherproof. Um, and it has two pages per display. And, and then we blown up a little bit to make it big, like for the sign or is it like the normal page? 
It's the normal page and we have to do it that way because of copyright law. So we can't manipulate any, we can purchase the book and we can display it as it's, um, as it's purchased, but unfortunately we can't manipulate any of the pages or we're breaking the law. But I wish we could blow them up a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> That's cool. So, so what's, what, where does it stand exactly? So that, the, the, the select board approved it going on the common and then what happens next? So now I'm, I'm working with the um, historical um, common commission um, to just, I, I reached out just this morning to Carolyn to kind of see what um, the procedure would be and who I needed to chat with. So that's, that's where we are right now. All right. Any other questions on story walk? I think Megan has her hand up, but I don't know if she means to. I don't think that I wanted to, sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, one last question. So you envision this being there um, for a month on the mm -hmm. common, and then after that facilities can move it to the library. Proper, the library. Proper? Yes. And so these stakes, just cause I hear stakes and I hear children makes, makes me crazy. So are they, like sticking up stakes, are they rounded stakes? I mean, how, you know. There are no yeah. stakes. So they're stands, they're a sense, they're like, they're, they're mailbox. What you would see is like a mailbox post. And the, um, the top of the mailbox post is settled in a four by four square. Um, no, 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 I understand that part. I'm saying what's securing it to the ground given the fact that like the weather could be stormy or, you know, you've got like a big surface area and you've got wind and not a lot of protection around the common. So you had mentioned something about stakes holding it or get added security to the ground. I'm just trying to envision what those stakes might look like. Uh, they're like tent stakes, only a little more heavy duty. So the spikes are in the ground. Mm -hmm. and they're um, um, around the metal piece of the Christmas tree stand. So the Christmas tree stand and it's- gotta be like this. Are they, are they staples? They're like uh, staples, yes, okay. staples, yes. Thank you. Good, okay, so what's up next? Okay, I think that was it. And then I just had an outline of um, projects that are still in progress. Um, and I um, put in the outdoor programming space and then the projects that we're still considering, um, we're talking about the, we've talked a little bit about the new carpet in the children's room. I reached out for a quote um, to TF Andrew and also out to state carpet, which Carolyn let me know they previously did an install for us and they did a nice job. They did um, the, the main space. So um, I'm, I'm waiting for a call back from them. Um, and so this would be considered for us to vote on in a couple months to decide if this is something we wanna move forward with with capital budget. So this is just the background research that's going on. Um, hard, and- Hard to get a quote though without picking a carpet because there's, there's a, a huge range of potential costs. Um, That's right, because you said the on what materials you use and all that kind of stuff. So we, we should probably try and get some idea of, you know, what our options might be. And, you know, Nora can help us with that if you want. And speaking of Nora, um, I, I don't want to move away, but I do have something else to add to that. Uh, anyway, um, so, you know, maybe we can get her to, um, you know, Look at give us things. give us ideas um, and we can see if there's anything that's in the realm of possibility. Sure. Um, yeah, the carpet samples we received from TF Andrew would not work for us. Um, so, but the research has begun and um, we're also still researching um, ways to improve the, the West Wing uh, room echo. Um, that's a way that's um, affordable. So that's all. Thank you. Uh, and then on, on that same note, um, I did get the quote from Nora for redoing the four chairs near the periodicals room. Um, and it will be just just under $3,300 uh, all in for the labor and materials. The materials um, are available. They're not in stock. It would take a couple weeks to get them, um, but uh, 
you know, if, if that is something people are interested in doing, we should talk about like where it would come, you know, where we should take the money from or how, you know, what the best way to move forward is. Uh, didn't we at the last meeting say that Megan, you were gonna see if the town would help pay for that? I don't know if you've been able to follow up on that. I did follow up on that um, and they- I take it from your expression. <laughs> <laughs> I was not able to sell it, um, unfortunately. Um, but I think we do, I think we can talk maybe um, in the next couple of weeks about maybe somewhere else that we, I have an idea of where maybe else we could take it from, but um, okay. we'll talk about that in the future. All right. So then that is Bronwyn. Hi, I'll try to be quick. I know we want to move along. Um, I had a couple of quick things. I just don't know if anybody noticed, but so far we've brought in over $1,000 in fines and fees. And I looked up last year for the entire year, we brought in $348. So clearly we're having, uh, people are paying their fines. Uh, obviously we have a lot more traffic now. And um, as Megan had mentioned, um, now that OCLN has reinstituted blocks, people are, are paying up. So um, I think the town does kind of keep an eye on, on what we bring in. Um, we used to bring in a lot more, $10,000 or so for the year. And then we did some fine free things and, and it did drop down, but um, just wanted to point that out. And then the only other things I wanted to highlight, um, the ProQuest on the bill, on the uh, warrant is um, we're adding Heritage Quest back on to our offering since Ancestry as of December 31st is not going to allow patrons to access it, uh, it at home. You have to come into the library to use it. But Heritage Quest has not exactly the same thing as Ancestry, but uh, it's a partner of ancestry and so and it can be accessed um you know anywhere um and so we thought that would be a good uh, uh, ancestry has been very very popular at home and so we thought it, we wanted to offer something um to the patrons who want to research their uh family history and then the only other thing that i noticed uh, unusual or different is um the very large baker and taylor bill and that is because part of it is um we redid our annual lease for the Red Hot Reads and Krista made the decision, I guess along with Megan, there was discussion and they decided to drop down the monthly number of books because we just, they, they, they're going out, but we don't need as many as we had. And so we, we we're doing 40 a month instead of 50. So the bill is about, uh, about $3,000 less than the year before. And I think that's everything, unless someone had questions about anything that they saw on the warrant. I'm happy to. I had a question. I noticed that you put in the, um, the printer charges at the bottom of the um, spreadsheet, which was um, yes. credits. At, um, yes, is that's, that, the, that's the patron printer. Yep. Yeah. And is, that, is that the normal run rate? You know, it's, it really varies a lot. Um, I, I take out the funds about once a week. And um, we've also had some issues where pe uh, people have brought in, they have a credit card and so they wanna pay that way. And so we've had to basically uh, bill them through their workflows account and then they go and go online and pay the bill. And so sometimes there's not so much cash. So. Uh, and that will come, will eventually get paid that through the OCLN. They send a monthly check. So um, it really has been varying a lot. Some weeks there's only $25, $30. Other weeks there's, um, the, I think they're getting $80 the last time I counted it. So uh, I guess, I guess where I, what I, my question was, um, do we normally run a big deficit like that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we, the, Did we think about raising our prices? Um, we actually, Megan and I were just talking about that. I, I, that. I don't think we've come to a decision on that. Um, our timing was horrible on that because when we first um, started up the patron printing was, 
what was that maybe in February of 2020, Megan? Yeah. And so um, Megan had been talking with Don Piat, who's the town um, accountant. And he said, you know, he, he knew we weren't going to be bringing in any money and he, he's agreed that they will cover the, the deficits. So um, we already started with a deficit with the revolving account. Um, and it doesn't seem to be a problem, although I don't know that the town would love us to be running large deficits year after year. What, and what are we charging now per page? 20 cents for black and white, and I believe it's 50 cents for color. Yes. Um, and I don't know, I haven't done a survey of other, uh, you know, people who have copiers around town, maybe I know UPS, people go there sometimes. I don't know what they charge, but that's something that we had talked about. Yeah, we are, I think we are less. Um, as Bronwyn had mentioned, so, you know, we started this up and then we're, we're closed for a year. So we have a year worth of, or a year and a half really worth of lease charges that we had no money coming in at all. Um, and even now, you know, our attendance in the library, while it's, you know, decent, um, it's certainly not up to pre-COVID numbers. Um, so we're, we're still kind of at a slow pace when it comes to people coming to back to use our computers. Um, public computers just don't sound um, really printing to people right now. And we do have the wireless printing that we started about two months ago. Um, we need to be, do better about the marketing for that. And so um, I'm still, I'm reluctant to have a reactionary um, price increase just because it's not, you know, we're not at regular business right now. And I have had nice conversations with Don about it. And a lot of departments are in the same boat about a lot of different things uh, that they offer, um, that they're in the deficit um, and because of the pandemic. So um, he kind but of said so that the deficit is really because of the lease charges as opposed to yes. the actual printing charges. Okay. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions on the bills? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All right, so let's see. Um, we'll start with Megan Brinsey. Yay. Brooke Jewell. You're muted. Yay. <laughs> Elaine Breslow? Aye. Carolyn Coffey? Aye. Steve Brown? I approve. And Catherine Harvey? I approve also. Um, so motion carries. Um, okay, so next is my report. Um, I, I don't have a lot to report on. I'm gonna kind of just fold in the friends because I'm rushing a little bit and I apologize for that. I The other meeting I go I have to go to is, has to be done by year end and has been rescheduled twice. So I'm gonna go quickly. Um, so just um, from the friends, we um, the appeal is down a little bit this year. Our letter went out uh, a couple weeks later than usual. And we're hoping that accounts for the, the change and that it will pick up. Um, as we discussed last year, people were incredibly generous. We were way up last year. So, you know, it's unclear so early on whether this is sort of a, a leveling out or um, if it's just a little bit, a little bit delayed. Um, we, um, I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but we are having our bylaws overhauled um, for which we have actually retained counsel. Um, there was apparently a tax filing to the state that we should have been filing and we were not. And so we have, I think for pretty short money, uh, retained some lawyers who re represent nonprofits and they are getting it all sorted out for us and we'll do the filings going forward and are at the same time overhauling the bylaws for us. Um, they were very much out of date and did not really hew very closely to what our sort of modern practice was. And um, so I think some fun was had in finding the old bylaws, which I think were written in the sixties and Broadman I know was instrumental in, in helping put some pieces of the puzzle together on that. Um, 
so we're we're bringing the friends into the 21st century and getting everything squared away so that we know that we are um, in compliance with our own bylaws and with whatever re state requirements we have to adhere to to maintain our um, our nonprofit status. Um, we are thinking about a second book bin because that has been incredibly successful. We're getting like you know I, I think I think we collected four hundred dollars last month. Um, so that's a huge uptick for us. Um, and, um, we are getting requests all the time. Where can I donate books? Um, so in order to keep the, um, ongoing book sale afloat, uh, I think we're going to do another major collection and we are also reaching out to, to friends and, you know, <laughs> what we're really looking for are sort of like the new hot reads and sort of the bestseller types um, because you know if anyone who has perused the book sale knows we have already quite an impressive inventory of procedurals and thrillers and Thriller. mysteries <laughs> and so anything that is sort of like you know recent literary fiction that kind of stuff um, is very much desired so so shoot me a text or an email um, if you happen to have anything like that we'll take it off your hands um, and um, we hosted a staff appreciation lunch for the staff this week, um, having come to the astonishing realization that nearly two years had passed since we'd had a staff appreciation luncheon, um, which is a tradition that we had um, had in place for every June before uh, COVID, obviously, which used to include not just the staff, but the trustees as well, um, and volunteers and, and so on. Um, so obviously it was sort of a paired back uh, version in, in the name of social distancing and small groups, but it was, um, it was very nicely done. Barbara had arranged uh, for, um, for it to be catered by a, in a, the form of a box lunch, which again allowed for very safe social distancing, uh, which was prepared by the Fresh Feast and was great. And it was a, a very nice um, gathering, I thought, and I hope the staff enjoyed it. Um, and I think that's about it from the friends. Um, and I think we've pretty much covered everything else through Megan's uh, report. Um, anybody have questions on anything? Just real quick, the historical society, the art, did you ever come to a, just in a nutshell? Uh, that's still sort of ongoing. Um, go ahead, Megan. Yeah, uh, so I reached out to Lynn just last week um, and she said before Christmas, she was going to have a policy um, for the trustees to review, which um, to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, quickly, speaking of the Historical Society, um, we just did a collaboration with them. They have a nice uh, lecture lecture series um, ongoing that we've been working on and uh, they have essentially museum passes now at the library that folks can check out that they could go to a lecture for free. Um, so that's been a nice collaboration with them. People can check out a historical society lecture pass and, and go for free. Great. Um, okay, so uh, CLT? Hasn't met since the last meeting. Okay, all right. Um, is there anything else? Am I missing anything else? I've got full screen, so I'm not looking at the agenda here. Just to make sure we've hit everything. Um, all right, well, I think that is it. I'm going to dash away to my other meeting. It was nice seeing everybody and um, Happy New Year to everybody. It will be 2022 when we reconvene and enjoy your holidays. And um, with that, I will need a motion the next to year. adjourn. Do we need oh, a right. <laughs> Can yes. I hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Say aye. Yes. Aye. <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs>